Wow. And we're off. It is just now 9.01 a.m. U.S. Pacific Daylight Time here in Los Angeles. Malkuth X says, Hake looks like the before picture pictures in a hairline restoration infomercial. <laughs> what a mess. Did you know that I've had this hairline since like 2011? Uh, although it has gotten thinner for sure. It was falling out when I was drinking a lot of rock stars and monsters. Maybe, maybe that was the issue. I'm not really sure. Lo- lo- very little sleep. <laughs> that may have been the problem. Don't do that, guys. Uh, it's Friday, November 5th, 2021 AD. And I have some stuff to share with you. They're going after Kyle, Jack Bauer, John Wick, Written House. What a mess. It's, uh, somebody told a joke and it was kind of funny. Well, it's funny that he got kicked off. It's just a funny situation. Michael Eric Dyson, that lying scumbag, fast-talking intellectual, light-skinned, black radical, communist, which is to say liar, um, evil person. He calls himself a reverend, by the way. Reverend Doctor. (laughs) And the Loudoun County, quote-unquote, rape mess. It's ridiculous. And, of course, your calls. We'll have a fun, loosey-goosey Friday show, I think. But let's get right on with the show! Yes, this is the AJ song, AJ Gallardo original. Shout out to Trevor Wesley for the other version that we play Monday through Thursday. Also excellent. You can call in. Oh, it's the Hake Report. The Hake Report. La la la. Oh, it's the Hake Report. The Hake Report. La la la. doing i am fine i am wearing my american shooters las vegas nevada t-shirt shout out uh nice little indoor shooting firing range firing range um guys you can call in 888-775-3773 i got my get a job sticker my uh cool handy dandy Battle flag, rebel flag, patch. Shout out to the uh, Confederates, the South, the beautiful South. The, uh, the liberals are smearing history and taking away stealing history and erasing history. And then they're accusing us of, of doing it. And they're lying about history. And then they're accusing us of doing it. This whole CRT madness. I will get to that. But first, guys... I want to talk about one of my favorite subjects, which is Kyle Jack Bauer, John Wick Rittenhouse. And I don't know what type of person he is, um, but he seems like a fairly upstanding young man. It's ridiculous. Listen to this horrific dishonesty from the far left, and then I will get to your super chats and your calls. Enemies of America, enemies of truth, AP. Did you know that AP, Associated Press, hate truth? They hate Trump. They hate America. They hate white people. They hate Christians. They're evil. AP, Associated Press, which a whole lot of conservative and local news outlets, they get AP articles and repost them on their website. They're considered like an authoritative journalistic organization by the... The world, the world, the Bible always warns you the world is evil, and AP is part of that world. It is of the world, not just in the world. 
fifth and sixth paragraph down from this article, I have the headline screenshotted. Prosecutors show Rittenhouse trial jurors video of shootings. And that's not the, it's not the real story. And it was out November 3rd by Tammy Weber, double B, Michael Torm, and Amy Forliti. This is the fifth paragraph. The scenes were part of a wealth of video played in court that captured the chaos and the repeated sound of gunfire on the night the 17-year-old aspiring police officer filed, fired, not filed, fired an assault rifle during a tumultuous demonstration against police brutality in the summer of 2020. Notice, I shall point out before I read the sixth uh, paragraph, which is even worse, that they, they credulously, which is to say gullibly, blind leaders of the blind, repeat the phrase police brutality, which doesn't even exist. It was, they were protesting the shooting of Jacob Blake, which was not an example of police brutality. It was an example of black out of control, resisting arrest, fighting the cops and refusing to drop a knife. And I'll tell you more about that in the courtroom. That was the, uh, it was the rioting. And that was after Georgia, Florida, too. It was amidst that whole mess. In 2020, you may recall, Georgia, Florida got the knee on his neck and he was crying for his mama, which he called his girlfriend, his white girlfriend. In the courtroom, this is the uh, AP talking, Rittenhouse, seated in the juror's line of sight, kept his eyes fixed on a desktop screen and, listen to this, showed no emotion as video depicted him Listen to this. Walking down a street with his rifle and shooting at protesters, people scattering and screaming. Isn't that a shocking line? They describe the way they describe it, it sounds like he's walking down the street trying to pick off protesters. Such a lie. He ran, tripped. They I think they tried to tackle him, right? And they were jumping at him, attacking him, shooting attackers, not protesters. Rioters, not protesters. And thank God those people uh, scattered and sc- screamed. They should be. Hey, have you ever heard a black person use the word tumultuous? <laughs> Maybe Michael Eric Dyson. I'll get to him. That was a tremendous tackle. <laughs> I went to Pasadena City College. That was my, introdu- my heavy, he- heaviest introduction to black people over in Pasadena. Where are you at? As Tupac used to say before he got killed by another black, allegedly. Uh, yeah, ridiculous, huh? Showed no emotion as if he's this cold-blooded killer and he's just trying to show no emotion. Give me a break. Walking down the street with his rifle and shooting at protesters. Just such a caricature. Such a caricature. Anyway, there was this funny joke. Regard related to this Kyle Rittenhouse trial. I don't know if it was funny, but I saw this on News Nation YouTube channel. I don't have the video for you, but Rittenhouse trial juror dismissed because of a joke about Jacob Blake. Jacob Blake being the excuse for the rioting, right? The riot inspiration. Stupid prosecutor claimed it was racial bias. This is from NPR November 4th by Becky Sullivan, who, uh, also gets the story wrong about Jacob Blake, at least. The juror, a retired white man, made the joke to a court police officer, is a juror on the Kyle Rittenhouse trial, formerly on it, made the joke to a court police officer who was escorting him to his car, this retired white juror, on Wednesday afternoon, just this week. The officer then reported the joke to Judge Bruce Schroeder. And so he was called before the judge and lawyers on Thursday morning. The cop snitched on the uh, juror. (laughs) I thought cops weren't supposed to snitch. But anyway, that's just on each other, I guess. The juror confirmed that he made a joke, but declined to repeat it. (laughs) And so the prosecutor, Thomas Binger, B-I-N-G-E-R, Binger, said it was my understanding it was a, it was something along the lines of why did the Kenosha police shoot Jacob Blake seven times which is not what happened 
It's my understanding that the rest of the joke is, this prosecutor says, corrupt prosecutor, because they ran out of bullets. Meaning, I guess they were going to shoot him more times than just that. And that's supposed to be racist, I guess. Blake was 29 years old. You, you may recall Jacob Blake, 29 years old at the time of the shooting. Sh- and the NPR lady, Becky Sullivan, says he was shot seven times in the back. Reminds me of talking to that dense guy, Earl, who used to call into my show. Claimed that Jacob Blake was shot seven times in the back. That's fake news. The officer fired seven times, according to all reports, including from the, uh, the males, the so-called victim, really the, the suspect, the suspect who got shot. His lawyer himself said he was hit four times. So he was not shot seven times in the back. That's a lie. Anyway, it's a fine point, but I like to get, the, get it right, right? Especially, the, this is NPR, National Public Radio, Radio, partially funded by viewers like you. Rustin Shesky is the white Kenosha police officer who shot him in self-defense. I'll explain later. Outside an apartment building August 23rd, 2020. Police have been called to the building by a woman. Stop calling police on blacks. Well, this was a black woman calling the police on a black. Previously filed a so-called sexual assault complaint against Jacob Blake. She was his boyfriend. I mean, she was his girlfriend. They were girlfriends. Or boyfriend-girlfriend, if you want to call it that. Blake was left paralyzed from the waist down. I don't envy him, but he got what he... He got what he uh, was asking for, Literally. Well, he didn't ask for it, but he was, his behavior brought that on him, right? Duh. Both police and Blake acknowledged he was holding a knife. Though Blake says he was moving to place it in his car after it fell from his pants. (laughs) Typical liar. Oh my gosh. I mean, I just call, I'm calling that a liar. I don't know he's lying, but that's my speculation. Just what, just to be totally transparent. (laughs) Here's the real story from Wikipedia. Wikipedia has the real story. (laughs) I should be using infogalactic.com, guys. Shout out to uh, infogalactic.com. That is a a little bit more of an honest version, or a lot more maybe, of Wikipedia. Shesky, the white officer, shot Blake, Jacob Blake, the black suspect, in the back, set, firing seven times, seven times, inflicting multiple wounds when Blake opened the driver's door to an SUV and leaned into it. Shesky said that he believed he was about to be stabbed. See? Self-defense. Earlier during the encounter, Blake had been tasered and had scuffled, which is to say fought, with officers. Blake had an arrest warrant from, uh, from July. He had a warrant for his arrest since July, the month before, based on charges of Third-degree sexual assault, unless the black lady, uh, girlfriend is lying. Trespassing and disorderly conduct in connection with domestic abuse. And by the way, they were fighting over kids, too. A bystander who recorded the video of the incident with the cop shooting Jacob Blake in the back. This is all the inspiration for the Kenosha riots, right? Partly. Either the excuse, honestly. They just want to tear apart the country. They want to destroy it. That's the real insurrection, and rebuild it in their communist image, or anti-white image. I did not say that Earl died. I don't know where, uh, I did not call him my dead caller. Earl, I don't know if he's alive or dead. I did not call him dead. FYI. I have no clue about the whereabouts of Earl. So if you think that I said that he's dead, you misheard me. A lot of people in the chat are speculating that he is dead. I did talk about uh, the protesters who, so-called protesters who've died. But anyway, just to clarify, just to clarify. But Earl, my former call, I called him my former caller maybe because Earl has not called in some months. Uh, the bystander who recorded video of the incident, this Jacob Blake versus the cop, versus the cops, multiple cops, told reporters he heard police yelling, drop the knife. The bystander stated, I didn't see any weapons in his hands. He wasn't being violent. 
Well, that's what this, I think it's a black uh, bystander who recorded video. He's claiming it wasn't violent, but listen, listen on. The police union said Blake was armed with a knife in his left hand, but officers did not initially see it, and he forcefully fought with the officers. That sounds violent, including putting one of them in a headlock. (laughs) He put one of them in a headlock, and the bystander says he wasn't being violent. (laughs) Maybe the bystander was up in the top floor, and the headlock was behind the SUV, and he didn't see it. Maybe. To give the benefit of the doubt to the lying black witness. Well, the witness who's... Saying something that isn't true. <laughs> it's very frequently witnesses will lie, especially black witnesses and black jurors. I'll get to that. Uh, forcefully fought with the officers, putting one in the headlock, ignoring orders to drop the knife based on the inability to gain compliance and control after using verbal, physical, and less, less lethal means. The officers drew their firearms, according to the police union. And the union, you know, they have a duty to protect their officers, but you can be pretty sure that they're going to try to tell the truth. After an initial st- scuffle, which is, a, which is to say fight, Blake went, walked to the driver's side of the vehicle. You guys have seen the video, probably. Followed by Officer Rustin Shesky and another officer with handguns drawn. Shesky attempted to grab Blake, and when Blake opened the driver's side door and leaned in, Shesky grabbed him and fired seven shots towards Blake's back. According to Blake's attorneys, four shots, not seven, four shots hit Blake. Blake later admitted he, listen to this, wasn't thinking clearly. That's his quote. And picked up a knife during the altercation, although he denied having intent to use it. (laughs) Yeah, okay, sure, buddy. Maybe, maybe, who knows? <laughs> it's, I watched a video from that chapter. I feel like I've mentioned that chapter earlier this week. They're a big channel. It's this Irishman who is, likes to tell stories about serial killers and different things like that. And it was very interesting. Here in America, there was this 18, 19, 20, 21 year old, 22 year old, black male who was suspected and then later convicted of being a serial serial killer of black female, uh, mostly whores. What's the word for whore? What's the, uh, because instant whore isn't a bad word to use. No, it's not a bad, I mean, it's what they are. Prostitutes, strippers, whatever. I think oftentimes they overlap, right? And then, uh, he got one, he, he tried to get one girl, and he might have gotten her, killed her. And he tried to, like, basically subdue her, but she fought him off. And then said, oh, I have my phone back at the, at the, my motel, and the cops are gonna find you. <laughs> and so he convinced, she convinced him to drive back to their hotel and then she was in handcuffs or something but she's double jointed and so she got out of the constraints at least somewhat and was able to run away fight him off and run away and then the po- she was in hiding and the police came to her and she's all oh he beat me look at my face i'm kind of beaten but the cops didn't really believe her because you know people people lie against men and this was one time the cops Hey, shout out to the MGTOW people. The, the cops didn't quite believe the the escort, right? Or they didn't have any real evidence to go on. And so this guy was watching and he got away with it. He killed another person, a female. And then later he's convicted. He, sp- he spends time in prison. And just this month, these things took place in like 2018, I want to say. 2019. 2016, maybe. Convicted in 2019. And barely now sentenced, or something like that. Sentenced in October 2021, years later. He spent time in prison, got all big. He was a skinny black guy. And then he says, quite convincingly, well, to me it was somewhat convincing, I was framed by the county prosecutors. (laughs) And he's like reading it, stumbling over his words, but reading it with authority with a false sense of authority, and I'm like, whoa, I could almost believe him. 
Huh. And he's appealing to all these people because there's supposedly all these people who are falsely convicted, right? But I'm like, why would the prosecutors try to frame this guy? Well, they are trying to frame Kyle. Hmm. Interesting. But it's interesting how they just, they just lie, brazenly lie. And if you don't watch out, you can believe the lies. And of course, this guy was sentenced. Crazy, though, huh? Anyway, he says he wasn't thinking clearly. He doesn't know why, but he didn't intend to use it. He was trying to put it, put it away. <laughs> he, so he claims. I don't know. Just made me think of that. Uh, one quick item. Why is Kenosha, Wisconsin, which I think of as like a beautiful white town, so corrupt? I'll tell you later. I'll tell you later. Wow, that's a long uh, post, Anna. Shout out to the Facebook crew. I'll tell you later why Kenosha is so corrupt. But we are at 922 here in Los Angeles. Let me get to a call or two. Uh, Ashley Babbitt had no knife, says the good doctor. Yeah. Let me get to Chuck in Detroit, Michigan. It's been a while since I talked to Chuck. How you doing, Chuck? What's up, man? You came to me first. Yeah. First the worst. First first the worst. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, okay. Well, I'm first, though, right? That's right. All right, man. Uh, Hey, man, let me say this to you. Okay. The guy that uh, wrote, the black guy that wrote songs for Elvis Presley, I'm here to uh, address your audience. His name was Otis Blackwell. Uh, take that with a grain of salt, listeners, but appreciate the uh, tip. I don't know if it's true or not. Oh, it's very true. He wrote, uh... Just because be you're cool. saying it doesn't mean it's true. Well, Google. Okay, well, Google it. Google it. Right Google friend. is evil. Google, huh? Google is evil? Yeah. Well, how can you confirm anything? It's very difficult nowadays. Okay. All right. Are you on a speakerphone or Bluetooth or something? You're coming in rough. How about not? Much better. Yeah, you know better, man. What the heck? Okay. Well, sometimes it come in good. Sometimes you say something. Sometimes you don't. Okay. Sometimes I be on speakerphone. Oh, okay. But anyway, man, let me ask you this. Uh, What about your people that attacked the Capitol building? Me and you ain't never had that discussion. Let's have that one. Why do you say they're my people? Aren't they Trump supporters when they Trump supporters? I don't know. Yeah, they were. We no, all know. Y- they you, were. you make that claim, but again, we can't we can't believe you. Right. We can believe the TV though, right? No, you can't believe the TV. What in the world? How old are you? Well, okay. How old are you? No, how old are you? How old 40. are you? You the one acting two. I asked you first. Well you act you acting four. Thank you. You acting like you four. You sitting there saying, so they didn't. You must become like a child uh, to enter the kingdom of heaven. Oh, I got a question, man. Why you ban Jeremiah, man? You know, I hated to do it. I I really like Jeremiah, but he was crossing too many lines, man. Why? He was making you look bad. You couldn't answer some of his questions and banned him for that, huh? No, it wasn't about that. He he was. Um, he was m- making violent references. That's just inappropriate. Oh, even okay. even he, John in he, Kentucky was like he was wrong. He was wrong for well, that. No, John John in Kentucky said he was wrong for losing his cool. That's he what didn't I meant. Say he was wrong. For, right. Okay. For losing his cool, that ain't the same as what you said. Just said. But what was he referring to when you said he was? Uh, uh, I'd rather was he threatening I'd rather, you. I'd rather not repeat it. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'd rather not repeat it. Okay, yeah. well, what about T in Alabama? What you ban him for? He crossed some lines, too. He's just nasty. What would you ban me for? What would be your reason for banning me? Banning me? Probably if you were to be, if you were to continue to be vulgar. Because that's probably See, you your, your that's vulgar. probably your main, your main, it, my main beef with you over the times that you've called in is when you're vulgar. See, this is the only thing you don't like, Hake. We all talk about you. 
You hate when I talk about them white women. That's what you hate about me. That's your beef with me. Do you, are you, do you want to be banned? Women. Do you want to be banned? I mean, I'm, it wouldn't matter. I would, it, I'm not going to be hurt. But, I mean, I, but answer my question. Do you, want, my do you want to be banned? It's, it's a yes or no. Do you want Listen, to be banned? Well, it, it don't matter. Do what you feel in your heart. How about that? That I'm should gonna, be easy. Uh, you don't tell me what to do. Do you want to be hey, banned? Yes hey, or no? Listen, fuck you, Hank. You okay, can't. goodbye. He's banned. <laughs> Jeez. Sorry, kids. Maybe I should have banned him before that. You could kind of sense. Could kind of sense it. Okay, Chuck is banned. It's a shame because I like Chuck too. <laughs> or do I? <laughs> what a mess. He never really calls in with anything. It's not a big loss, but. Uh, but you guys got to get a hold of yourselves. You know, uh, Michael Eric Dyson wrote this book. He's this evil guy who, um, it's called something to do with entertaining, entertaining race. And he's calling blacks the entertaining race. And that's, it's one thing that he's right about. (laughs) So, but Chuck is not very entertaining. It's, it's a shame. What a mess. <laughs> uh, Hank, what will your show be without angry blacks? Question mark, question mark, question mark, question mark, question mark, question mark, question mark. <laughs> I don't know, Malkuth X, but the show must go on, <laughs> mustn't it? Oh, man, terrible. Let me get to Dan in Tennessee. How are you doing, Dan? Hey, how's it going? Going well, thank you. I just wanted to say that your show would be about the angry black callers, but the angry black callers make it a lot, lot funner. Yeah. So I'm, I'm glad Chuck calls in, even though Chuck's an idiot. I'm glad he calls in. I'm glad he calls in because it's kind of eye-opening to hear someone act so immaturely and so hateful. Um, he thinks that it's a good thing. It reflects well on on him to be all into interracial uh, sex out of wedlock or whatever. I don't know. Yeah, obsessed. They're all obsessed with race. So I don't know. Not all, but most. Yeah. So, but I just want to call, say hi. Great show. Uh, Thank love you, man. guys. Bye. All right. Take care. I forgot what he. I didn't catch what he said at the very end. But thank you. Uh, let me read a few super chats, guys, before I get back to uh, stories and calls. Bibby42 says, When Chuck starts going off the rails like he tends to do, Hake needs to hit him with that classic line from that amazing Linkin Park song, Shut up, shut up, shut up, uh, when Hake's talking to you. <laughs> Funny, Bibby42. Uh, yeah, I used to like Linkin Park. I didn't own their stuff, but you heard it on the radio a lot back in the... 2001, 2002, I was going to APU, Christian College. Um, Quick super chat from Big Bump. Elvis recorded nearly 800 songs. Elvis Presley, upstanding young man. Uh, He was upstanding, I don't know. Uh, Chuck talking about someone who wrote five songs for him. Hilarious. (laughs) Yeah, thank you. um, Thank you, Big Bump. Single mom doing her best says, little, little white baby engineers, giant robots, emotional constipation, Lord Goodhair, galaxy brain skateboard white Chris, spirit of mama drama, it's repetitive and corny. (laughs) So single mom doing her best feels that Lin Yen Chen is repetitive and corny, but isn't that the typical rap, rock, I mean rap song, repetitive and corny. (laughs) But thank you, single mom, doing her best. I appreciate it. Someone also, someone gave a super chat on streamlabs.com slash the Hague Report and said, I almost put it WH, will Virginia's new lieutenant governor win some Sears? That's that black lady with an AR-15 hanging loosely from her hand. Want to be referred to as yes, queen? Oh, I hope not. 
Man. BB42 says, Chuck is banned. Hallelujah. He should be more concerned with black women choosing white men over him anyway. What a nasty, hate-filled individual. What a shame. That's what BB42 says. Uh, Brandon M. claims, and I don't know if this is true, but he gave a super chat on Odyssey. R.I.P. Rest in peace, Earl. Which I don't know if Earl is alive or dead or what. The only person needing more AC than Hake, which is a reference, if you're not already aware, to where he may be, where people want ice water. <laughs> uh, that dark humor from Brandon M. Or is he tell- thinking that he's just straight telling the truth? Unsubbed Hake, says Brandon M. This language is out of control. <laughs> Copycat Ninja. Totally thought that dude was a lady. I didn't, I didn't read this one yesterday. Referring to that angry black guy whom I went out on a limb and said he's gay, but I don't know. I apologize. But it was that guy who was like, suburban white women, what uh, are you for? What is your purpose? Because they voted, in his mind, against their own self-interest because... They're not in support of killing babies in the womb. Well, newsflash, white women aren't generally, honestly, that into killing babies. I know that a lot of them do it because there's a lot of them in this country. And a lot of people are classified as white, but uh, generally they, they're not into that. When you look at the uh, per pregnancy and per capita stuff, they're less likely to do it than others. FYI. So it's not, it's not, it's not even in their interest to be killing babies or in their interest to vote for phony Hillary Clinton, your sister. They, the blacks think that whites are into sisterhood and brotherhood. Some of them, there's some whites who are into being brothers, having a brotherhood against, um, amongst one another. And that's not a bad thing, but it's, it's projection by the blacks. So phony. Uh, Sho Sugino, I don't know if that's a, I don't, I'm not familiar with his name, gave a super chat, thank you man, on Odyssey and says, for stand ups, sand duck. I'm afraid to read this stuff. I don't, because I don't know what it means, but thank you. Appreciated. <laughs> quick super chat, guys, Qu- I mean, quick call, guys, quick call. Jeffrey in Wisconsin, what's up? Hey, hey, how is it going? It's going well. You're coming in rough, though. Oh, I'm in a box truck, my bad. Oh, okay. All right. I've driven and, those and I, before back in my manly days. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Speaking, speaking of, uh, I had a question about Halloween. Uh, did you dress up as Donald Trump for Halloween? I have never dressed up as Donald Trump for Halloween or for anything else. No. Oh, okay. I, yeah. I was wondering why. Didn't you, you know I was beard. a chupacabra? <laughs> is that what it is? Well, no, I was, not a, I was not the monster. I was not the goat sucker. It's like a vampire that eats goat blood or eats goats, sucks on goat's bloods. But uh, oh, wow. from Mexico or, or Puerto Rico or somewhere. But no, I was, the, <laughs> uh, I was a soccer player from my days 10 years ago when I was playing uh, soccer. Oh, okay. All right, all right, all right, I'm wrong. What made you ask (laughs) if I dressed up as Donald Trump? Uh, Oh, because I shaved? Yeah, you shaved and (laughs) you got a haircut. I'm like, wow, there could be a reason. That's funny. uh, I'm wrong, you know? Yeah. (laughs) I guess JLP is right that all thoughts are lies. (laughs) Yeah. No, I've been black once. I was a cholo a couple of times, a Mexican cholo, like a Mexican gang banger guy couple of times. I was homeless once. I've been uh, a dog as a kid a few times, but I have never been Trump. Okay. That, <laughs> that's, that's, that's perfect. Right. That's a lot of, that's a lot of uh, dress up. Yeah, I thought I, about I being dress, Asian, but, but I just couldn't, I don't know, I pictured, you know, getting taped to make my eyes look slanty, but sorry, Asians, oh, I, yeah. I can't do you very well. Yeah, I think 
Yeah, I just pulled into uh, Jim Adams in Illinois. I, I go across the border to deliver auto parts. So From Wisconsin to Illinois. What are you, oh, yeah. Kyle Rittenhouse? Kyle Rittenhouse <laughs> crosses the border, too. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, no, I, I don't, I don't, yeah, I've been, I've been hearing stuff on the news about that, and my, my, uh, my mom and grandma and pops watches the CBS. Oh, gosh. Sometimes, and I see that on, and oh my, those commercials are just atrocious. What uh, commercials? If that's a word. Oh, on CBS. I saw an Amazon commercial, and it, it did not look anything like Amazon. Oh, yeah. It scared me. It was spooky. Yep. Um, wow. They're evil. They're smearing Kyle. They're smearing regular Americans. They're propping up the interracial mess. They are pretending stuff is real that isn't. And then they're accusing us of being the suppressors and the liars. So ridiculous. By the way, by the way, did you know that Kyle John Wick, Jack Bauer Rittenhouse, just a side (laughs) note, he traveled 15 miles, 15, one five to Kenosha. People act like he traveled hundreds of miles or an AP or New York slime said, oh, he traveled a half an hour, half an hour away. Traveled. It's basically a commute. And it's a shorter commute than many people's commutes to go to That's Kenosha. True. It's where he hung out a lot. He loved that town. And he showed his love. And what did the people of Kenosha do to, against him? They are smearing him, including... I'm going to get to the mayor of Kenosha, who's not an yeah. honest person, probably not even a real Christian. It's probably because, you know, they're in between Milwaukee and Chicago, so, oh. you know, it's one of those things where ah. the in-betweeners, it's a good place to live, but uh, I guess there's a reason I, I passed through there and never stopped. Yeah. Man. Well, man, it's good to hear from you, Jeffrey. appreciate you. I uh, appreciate you too, Hank. Have a good one. All right, you too. So let me tell you guys about this. Uh, oh, ooh! I don't know if I have this picture of this guy, dude. Let me see if I can find it. Oh man, where is it? Did I get pictures of him? Oh, I don't know if I have it. Okay. Well, anyway, um, this is from Revolver News. Are you proud of me? Check in Revolver News. Revolver.news, it's a no-brainer, honestly. It's so easy that I almost feel guilty going there. <laughs> I feel like that should be harder. Kenosha County Eye uh, article. Shared on Revolver News. Why Kenosha is so corrupt? This is my words. Why Kenosha is so corrupt? Because I'm like, why are these people going after Kyle? He's clearly innocent. It's like, it's obviously self-defense. Armenian Democrat Kenosha mayor. Armenian. Armenians are supposed to be Christians, but many of them are Democrats. And scammers. This guy, apparently... No exception. Who let the city burn. He has a surrogate, a surrogate, a stand-in, a representative of his wishes in the courtroom. This is an article out November 2nd, 2021 by Kevin E. Matthewson. 1T Matthewson. I think. It's a bunch of crazy corruption and nepotism. Listen to this. It's an opinion piece. Uh, on the Kenosha County Eye. A blog post, apparently. Oh, man. Let me just see if I can just start screenshotting this stuff again. I feel like I screenshotted it already. Man. Let me see. But I don't think I put it in your folder at all. So, don't feel like you're... What is it called? Uh, I don't even remember. Man. Uh... No, I don't have it. Okay, so I will screenshot it, and I'll just drag it into the the main folder, just regular screenshots. Um, Dominic Black is a witness and Kyle's friend, a young man, who I think lent Kyle the gun. 
And there's a picture of him that I shall be showing you guys once I drag these things in the folder. And on the right is KPD, Kenosha Police Department, Detective Antaramian. Anytime you have the E-N, whether it's I-A-N or Y-A-N, you, uh, you, uh, do I have any Armenians listening to my show? You know that that's an Armenian name. Antaramian, Detective Antaramian, and, uh, same name, because he's his nephew, as the Kenosha Mayor, (laughs) Antaramian. John Antaramian. See, the guy on the right, the guy who's holding the gun, he's holding this gun in the courtroom, uh, Dominic Black is... Kyle's buddy, kid looking guy, and he's a detective, and he is a, according to this person's opinion, a surrogate for the mayor, Kenosha Mayor John Antaramian. (laughs) Why am I still having trouble with that name? Who is also a Democrat, by the way, a many term Democrat mayor. So this writer says he'll be in the courtroom for the duration of the political prosecution, which he calls it that, and I agree, of Kyle Rittenhouse. Since the trial is streaming on millions of devices around the world, I won't bore readers with the same reporting done by countless news agencies. Kenosha News putting out articles from the Associated Press. I told you about AP earlier today. Acting like he was just walking around trying to pick off protests is so stupid. Uh, Even though they have a full time assigned seat inside the courtroom, the local news, right? Local news not covering it, honestly, he's, according to this young man, according to this writer. I don't know how young he is. Maybe for once the Kenosha News editor doesn't want Deneen Smith's extreme left slant on the coverage of this case. Deneen Smith apparently is this radical. Uh, Local radical, who knows. But what I will do is point out things to those who are not intimate with this community, who don't know what's really going on with this community, and even some who are do not know. Kenosha Mayor John Antaramian has been mayor since 2016 and was elected in 2020 for his sixth term until 2024. He also served as mayor from 1992 to 2008. So he was mayor when a a friend of mine went and ran in Kenosha, Wisconsin for the cross-country nationals. That was my only, the only thing I knew about Kenosha was that was where cross-country You know, running, college running, nationals were for the NAIA, APU stuff. After his term, he will have been mayor for 24 years. Wow. He got away with it. Many sources told us he will not be seeking a seventh term because of the immense backlash from the Kenosha riots of 2020. Because Kenosha got destroyed. Businesses got destroyed. And these people did nothing. He let it happen. He let it happen. Most Kenosha res- residents view his response as very poor. I have a picture of him. I- Did I put it in there? Yeah, just put it in there. Uh, he is the chief executive of the city, including the police department. We didn't hear from him. He didn't lead. Many joke that he was hiding in his basement. Some tell us he was hiding in Lake Geneva. We don't know for sure. He won't tell us. This guy. Doesn't he look like a sleazy car salesman? Not to be racist against the Armenians. But he looks like it's somebody that you don't want to trust, especially look at that parentheses. D, Democrat. Armenians are supposed to be Christians. Christians are not supposed to be Democrats. He's a Democrat. Scumbag. Okay, so this guy, according to this writer, John has a lot at stake in the Rittenhouse trial. He wants Kyle convicted. He wants Kyle to take the blame and distract us from his failures as our leader. This is, this is what this guy is claiming. I don't know how he gets this information. I don't know if it's just his assumption, but it sounds interesting, huh? Lucky for John Antaramian, he has a lot of powerful family members in charge here in Kenosha. First off, his lead detective in the case is Benjamin Antaramian. That's that fat young man, youngish man, who is holding the rifle that you saw in that first picture next to Black. Kyle's buddy Black. 
His nephew, Benjamin, wants Kyle convicted. Benjamin was very thirsty to connect Kyle Rittenhouse to the Kenosha Guard Facebook page, which was supposedly like this, I don't know, white thing. Kyle was not related to that. The Facebook CEO, Mark Zuckerberg, even said twice, according to this writer, and he links, he links to it, that uh, Kyle was not part of that Kenosha Guard thing. And I don't know anything about this Kenosha Guard thing, but... I guess that that's where they get that he was a white supremacist or something stupid. He was not part of that. He was not. John the mayor and Tony the governor. Tony, you may recall. What's the, what's the last name of that governor? Tony, governor of Wisconsin. Tony Evers. Not a Christian, by the way. The sleazy, slimy, skeleton, skeletor looking weirdo. Tony Evers. If I remember correctly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ugh. I gotta drag this picture in. Just to remind you what this Tony Evers guy looks like. These yellow teeth. N- uh, not th- nothing against yellow teeth. I. Uh, well, anyway. He just looks wrong. I just dragged a picture of Tony Evers in the, in the thing. Evil person. Another Democrat. Probably not a Christian. I mean, obviously not a Christian. Look at that guy. He was smearing Kyle and pretending the Jacob Blake stuff and supporting shutting down the country. Okay, more than just that. The mayor's, so I told you about the mayor's uh, lead detective, who, who supposedly wants Kyle convicted. The city, the mayor's cousin is Kenosha City Attorney Ed Antaramian, Democrat. Ed Antaramian. His nephew is Kenosha City Judge Michael Easton, Democrat. His other nephew is Thaddeus Tip McGuire, Democrat, state representative. His other cousin is Laura Belsky, county board supervisor. This whole Armenian family is taken over. Those Armenians, they come in, they're very enterprising, uh, not always honestly, but they're go-getters. I don't know how long these Armenian family, this particular Armenian family has been in the country, but they go, they get into power. It's like what you guys say about the Jews. <laughs> they get in, they're just very enterprising, get into power, get all buddy-buddy, uh, and then they become influential, disproportionately influential. I don't, I, I don't know how Armenian the city of, of uh, Kenosha is, but it reminds me of, like, Glendale and North Hollywood or whatever. I got some Armenian friends. They're, and a lot of them are like that, and they end up being Democrats, they were part of the people who shut down the Glendale Gun Show, Glendale, California, not to be confused with Arizona. There was a gun show, and we protested it. We, I, Jesse Lee Peterson, and others protested the shutting down of the Glendale Gun Show because it was scapegoating uh, law-abiding gun owners. Ridiculous. These people, too. During the remainder of the trial, the mayor who let Kenosha burn has a surrogate in the courtroom at the prosecutor's table, this guy says. Kyle Rittenhouse is David in the state of Wisconsin with all their resources is Goliath, this man says, Kevin E. Mathewson, 1T. The only thing that gives Kyle a fair and likely shot to win is the generosity of strangers, plus he has the truth on his side, honestly, that donated money to his defense. He has now a a team of three sharp attorneys among the best in the business, this guy says. Now a fair fight? I don't know. It's not fair. He shouldn't even have to fight. It's clear self-defense. BLM sympathizer Kenosha DA Mike Gravely, like his predecessor Robert Zapf, loves the limelight and always prosecutes the high-profile cases, but not this one. Mike knows the state cannot win, this guy says. That's why he's leaving it to T. Claire. Let's see what T. Claire's excuse will be if he loses, which hopefully he does. Interesting, huh? That's wild. A lot of local corruption supports the uh, corruption of the culture at large. That's wild, huh? I was wondering about that. Why Kenosha? Anyway, um, I'm going to talk about this sleazy guy, Michael Eric Dyson. I have a couple of clips to share with you, too. But first, let me get to John in Kentucky. I mentioned his name. It's only fair. What's up, John? How are you? What's going on? Not much. No. I don't know a lot about the case, 
But I want to know why you defend uh, people like this kid. He was like 17 years old when this happened, right? That's not a kid. That's a young man. Yes. 17? Yes. Oh, well, he's, he's, not, a, he's not a legal uh, man, but it, should he have had a gun out in <clears throat> this type of situation at age 17? Definitely. I mean, is that right or is that wrong? That's right. He should have? Yep. That's right? Yeah. This is America. Oh, okay. This is America. In America, the militia age is 17 to 45. And honestly, so he had a gun license and everything. I don't know if you have to have a gun license for a rifle. I don't know the answer to that question. You need a license? What type of commie are you? I don't know. I'm asking. Oh, okay. I'm asking. I don't know. Oh, man. I just know at, at age 17, my dad won't let me go to a place and have a rifle and be ready to shoot somebody. Well, you were fortunate to have a dad. This young man didn't have a dad. He had his, hit his, uh, and it sounds like your dad was pretty weak. Um, no, your yeah. dad's pretty weak. <laughs> now you're going after my dad. I didn't even mention my dad. You, you brought it yeah, up. I mean, you brought him up. You insult him. You insult him, my dad. No, man. you're talking trash about your dad saying that he wouldn't let you go yeah. defend a community. Yeah, right. Um, there's, there's, you have the police. You have the National Guard. They don't have the the police. They don't have the National Guard. They don't have the Army. None of those people were there. You saw that the you saw the community get torn apart the day the night before. So they were there helping out, cleaning up, and then doing sharing, having medical. He was helping out with medical. He wanted to help out. So so where were the white men at? He was one of the white men. No, he's not a man. Yeah, he he is. Don't know anything about being a man. Yes, he does. He knows not, more than you. He's not a man at age 17. Yeah, right. Yeah, he does. Yeah, right. Yeah. Being a man is about responsibility, Hey, He was taking quite res- yeah. a lot of responsibility. But anyway, uh, is this kid a Christian? Is this kid a Christian? I think probably so, but I have no idea. He certainly acted so, like more of one than you. So, <laughs> so if he's not a Christian, you still defend people who aren't Christian? Of course. Don't does you do believe in innocent unless proven guilty? Does he do the silent prayer and everything? I have no idea. Why are you being so, so, so immature? He should, he should suffer then, right? Why are you being so immature? What What are you talking about? Because first of all, you don't even be, you don't even act like you believe in innocent unless proven guilty. You seem to be taking sides against him. Well, I'm just saying, like common sense. And will then you're tell being you silly. You don't. You mentioned. Why are you bringing up common sense? Go ahead. He what were you about suffer, to say right? about common sense? I said common sense will tell you a 17-year-old kid shouldn't be out with a rifle trying to be some type of uh, right-wing hero. First of all, that's not what he was trying to do. Now, he was not trying to be a right-wing hero. Hold on, trouble. man. Hold on, now man. He, you just made a claim. Common sense says that a 17-year-old, quote-unquote, kid shouldn't be out with a rifle trying to be some right-wing hero. You, you don't have common sense. Hero, a white nationalist. You, you, you know how you guys are. You don't have common but, uh, sense, John. Now you're just making claims he, that you have no. You admitted that you have no idea about this case. Hey, should he have to suffer though? Since he he's not a real Christian. If I didn't he say he's not mom, a real Christian. I said I don't know. The heck. Well, if he don't forgive his mom, he should be suffering in his jail cell, right? You're a clown. Why are you such a you're clown? A clown. I'm asking a question. I'm, I'm going you're by asking, your logic. I want to know. You're asking some of the stupidest questions I've ever heard. That's because you don't want to answer it. No, it has nothing on, to do with the case. You flip flop on your thinking. Well, the case is the the case doesn't trump being a Christian, right? It has nothing to do with whether he's a Christian or not. It's whether he's guilty or innocent in uh, in shooting these people in self defense. Well, which that's is the same it's thing plain as the it's plainly case, obvious. Right? You're just calling in because you hate white people and you hate Christians. Just admit it. And you hate Jesse Lee Peterson, and you hate me. I don't believe you guys are Christians, though. That's the same, man. I think you have no. Your just own admit that sex. you hate Jesse Lee Peterson. You hate me. You hate white people, hate and you hate Christians. I, I love Jesse. No, you I don't. Love Jesse, no, you man. don't. <laughs> I do not. What are you talking about? Show me where. Ha- lo- show me how you love Jesse Lee Peterson. I love Jesse to the point where you know I tune in and listen to him, even though I know he is a freaking clown, a freaking coon. Look actually. in the mirror. He's a coon clown. That, that's how it's got truth, man. And, and I don't think mirror. Jesse is serious. I don't think Jesse is serious about all that stuff. I think he's an entertainer, and he's found his niche. So he sticks with it. And you guys, you guys don't really respect him the way you put on. He, he's still black to y'all. I don't think y'all still, I don't think y'all respect him 
the way y'all put on. <laughs> you are, especially you. You listen to Satan you when you're on his show. You just huh? prove that you are Satan's child. Man, now you know you're the devil. No, you, you know look at yourself. Devil. You're just pure speculation about hey, what Jesse but, Lee Peterson I, thinks I, about what he's really saying, as if he's not honest in what he's saying. And then is what you think that you think that what I, you think I don't actually respect and admire JLP? Give me a break. You don't, man. Okay. All right. Uh, is he an entertainer? Of course, blacks are very entertaining. <laughs> it's but no, true. He's an entertainer. Are more. they not? Are they not? Enter- are you people not entertaining? I mean, we were, we were made special. We got a lot of talents, man. We got a lot of talents. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we're not as we're not bland like white people. You know, you know, white people can't dance. White people can't cook. Yes, we can. Yes, white we people can. Are like, white people are like plain and dull. Like we bring the spice to, to, to different things. You know what I mean? Well, thank you for calling in my show with the spice. Yeah, man. But uh, Kyle Rittenhouse, <laughs> man, I don't know if he's guilty or innocent. Pioneers are I dull. Don't see... Who? Pioneers are dull. White people pioneer. Explore. Composers, inventors, astronauts. Yeah, inventors. Very dull. Stealers. Very dull. Inventors, stealers. Oh, yeah, we stole all the black inventions. I forgot. Not all of them. Not all of them. But most. Right. We let you guys have your peanut butter. No, I know. <laughs> hey, peanut butter is not the only thing, man. I know, if, I know. If you can be, the yellow light. Be completely we let honest. you guys have your yellow light. <laughs> hey. All the guy, all the people that call in and try to tell y'all about black inventions, y'all y'all shut them up so quick because y'all don't really don't want to hear it. Yeah, we and don't want the truth it, to get it's out. Like fake news. You don't. I know you don't. But black <laughs> people have contributed to uh, America as well, man. It's not just peanut butter. <laughs> not just peanut butter. That's funny, man. Blackinventionmyths.com, dot go, com, according to Nick. Huh? Uh, Nick has put out black. He. He shares the website blackinventionmyths.com. M Y T H S. No, no. And and, and who and who uh, came up with this website? Uh, the true Israelites, not the blacks. No, I said who you said myths. Myths. Blackinventionmyths.com. Oh. Hey man, there's several though, man. There's several. You'd be surprised. I would. Black people are surprised as well. You know, white people aren't gonna put the truth out there like that. So what were you saying? Like, I gotta go, you, you were, huh? I gotta go. Huh? All right, goodbye. <laughs> you were saying, I don't know if Kyle is innocent or guilty. Uh, Dan East says, shout out to Nick the Phone Master. Indeed. Indeed. We are at two minutes till the top of the hour, guys. I'm going to talk about uh, Michael Eric Dyson. I have a couple clips to play for you. I watched his segment on The View. Those Cackling hens at the view. I'm not gonna share that clip with you Because I don't want to copy strike or whatever. They don't respect fair use, you know, YouTube Facebook Others they don't respect fair use the people who try to do copy strikes against people. It should be fair use because I'm using it for um, uh, News and analysis right or uh, commentary news and commentary, but anyway, I'll read to you a little bit about what he said and share a couple of clips. Uh, I have more on the Loudoun County "quote unquote" rape mess, and I use hard quotes on that rape. Uh, but first, do you guys want to put up with a twelve-minute song? Are you able to put it up and play the the video thing, and then at six minutes in, at six minutes in, it starts going on this droning thing, and it doesn't play, have any lyrics. Are you able to put me on screen after that point? Okay, cool. Uh, Last one or two songs from Suffering in the Hideous Thieves for this week, at least. Guys, Suffering in the Hideous Thieves was Jeff Suffering and a whole bunch of other people playing this orchestral music. I know that some of you guys think, oh, the melodies are meandering and it doesn't fit with the music. I like it. I like the melodrama. I will say that this is PG-13. Somebody, t- somebody gave me a YouTube comment saying, uh, James, my three-year-old s- told me I shouldn't listen to your show because you said dumb. <laughs> I told you. Sorry, kids. 
This is a little bit more than 11 minutes. It's not quite 12 minutes. But this track it is a PG-13 song, so cover your ears, kids. Uh, press mute. Grin and bear it, you musical Philistines. This is from the 2002 album Real Panic Formed on Velvet Blue Music. This track is entitled Sex is Dead. It's about a marriage. And uh, I think there's a little bit of truth to that. Enjoy or not, Sex is Dead by Suffering and the Hideous Thieves. And I'll be back hmm, midway through to read your chats and stuff. See you in, see you in a bit. thought that I could ever cross that line Now I see my impact on you Infecting you with self-hatred and pity 
that I force upon you every day And no one can ever bring back what's been dead For you are my true love And no one can ever bring back what you're dying Jump back through my twisting tide The cards we've been dealt are on fire And no one can ever put out these flames Isn't this nice? I wanted to end without trying. I can't hold it back anymore. Divorce. Taking a, a lifetime for granted. Ooh, I can't sit <laughs> cold anymore. My sex is dead. And yours is Becoming red While sex is dead And ours has no life anymore So good, am I right? Great message. This isn't nice, hey. This is bordering on a human rights abuse. Someone will pay for this. Suffering in the hideous thieves, guys. He's kind of right. People think that sex is life. Nuh-uh. It's death. It can lead to life, though. He's from Seattle. Everybody's depressed in Seattle, guys. This is the music goth people cut their wrists to. No, man, no. It's Christian. You can bring me back on the, on the lower right corner, I guess. How are you guys doing? Yeah. When your content is so good, you have to troll your audience with bad music. I don't think it's bad. It took a lot of people and a lot of talent to make this album. I will be getting back to calls, guys. I enjoyed this album. Same guy who brought you 90 Pound Wuss. Very cool. Harmony, cello, violin. One of them, I don't know if he's a priest or not. I assume that he is, but I don't know. Uh, this guy, Jeff Suffering, right there, with the glasses. He was on the worship team for Mars Hill Church up there in Seattle. Why does it sound kind of emo, hey? I don't know what emo is, man. I liked 90 Pound Boys. This stinks! What's up, Black Stepdad? Play some Leonard Skinner. See, Mars Hill. Thanks, Mars Hill, The Paradox. Another blue music. Another Christian label. See? Mars Hill Church. Jesse interviewed the pastor from Mars Hill Church. He got the chicken song. He got the chicken song because he was promoting all kinds of degenerate sex in marriage. But this guy's right. That sex stuff is dead. 2001. Hope you like it, guys. Emo equals emotional. I know that. What's up, Johnny Leonard? 
Nine Inch Nails is beta. I agree with that. Oh. This song is longer than the Energizer Bunny. It just goes on and on and on and on. <laughs> Sex died eight years ago, hey. Uh, what do you mean, Karen Williams? Nice beat, says OD Red Skull. There's Velvet Blue Music, guys. Great label. I used to watch the Velvet Chris Blue Christmas concerts out of Huntington Beach. I used to go to Biola, Bible Institute of LA, and watch some of these bands play for Christmas. Witches singing. This is harpy music. <laughs> the demons from Africa. The song is so bad. Satan is holding his ears right now. <laughs> you would know, Skip. No, I'm playing. James promotes rock music for America, and Henry Ford prom promoted country music for Americans. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> I took my uncle to see this, and he liked it. He said it was reminiscent of The Doors. That was his reference point. Anybody see that? Any see any? Anybody see it? Hear that? If you're going to talk on radio, you should talk about yourself. Sex and COVID season don't mix. Sex is bad, says Gary Duarte. Well, guys, thank you for bearing with me through that song. That was a long song. You guys have endurance. Still, a few hundred people tuning in. Very cool. <laughs> well, thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Let me get to Rick in Maine, been patiently on hold. He has a rebuttal to Chuck regarding the Capitol. What's up, Rick? Thank you for holding. <laughs> I can see why that guy never never received any notoriety. <laughs> All that racket was drowning you out. We couldn't even hear you, or at least I couldn't even hear oh, you. Oh, okay. All I heard was that racket. <laughs> <laughs> well, sorry, guys, hey, if I was not talking loud enough to drown out the music. The dr music was drowning me out, says, says Rick. <laughs> Yeah, I uh, I got a rebuttal from Mr. Chuck. Are you on a speakerphone? You're coming in kind of muffled. Is it? Yeah, I'm in a weak area. Okay, we'll I'm try it. We'll try it. We'll trudge through it. Okay. Listen closely. All right. <laughs> uh, Mr. Chuck, since you think that the white people were so bad at the Capitol. Why was a black man standing in the hallway on videotape, look that up, Nick, and uh, stating, burn this sucker down? Right. Really? Yeah, mixed, light skin, black, Black Lives Matter grifter, actually, from way out of state, like Utah or somewhere. That's that James so you, Earl, John yeah. Earl so Sullivan or something like that. So you yo-yos that get on here and get on Jesse's show and bring up all this crap. Yeah. You better be doing your homework before you jump in there. Because I just might jump in there with a rebuttal against it. Nice. Do your homework, Chuck. Yep. Have a good one. Have a good one, buddy. Thank you, Rick. I appreciate you, man. Take care. And speaking of these blacks who think that they're so inventive back in the day, Brandon M. says, whites created fried chicken. Where would John be without that? <laughs> Blacks didn't create peanut butter, Brandon M. says, and he's a historian. He may know. The Aztecs did, and it was patented by a white Canadian. Wow. So, listen and learn. So let me tell you guys about this Michael Eric Dyson guy. You ever heard of him? Uh, by the way, JLP has debated this guy, Michael Eric Dyson. 
um, on affirmative action years ago, probably like 2002, I think, in front of the NABJ, National Association of Black Journalists. Uh, Dyson wrote an article later calling him the Minister of Minstrelsy. This sle- sleazy Dyson was calling J.C. Lee Peterson that. And they both made appearances on Fox News. Uh, Hannity and Combs, remember that show? Sean Hannity and the late, great Adam- Alan Combs, who was supposedly a Christian, but also a Democrat? Psh, he was a mess. He interviewed JLP on his book, The Antidote, too. Nice guy, though. Alan Combs. And, uh, yeah, these people are ridiculous. This from the Daily Caller. Michael Eric Dyson says, White parents shouldn't have a say in the classroom because white people were participants in oppression. Chrissy Clark wrote this article, November 4th, because he appeared on The View with those cackling hens. He's a so-called reverend. Reverend Dr. Michael Eric Dyson. He's not into titles at all. By the way, he's kind of fat. Uh, Professor at Vanderbilt University told the co-hosts of The View, the females, that he believes white parents should not condemn CRT, critical race theory, inspired lessons, because white people have been participants in a particular problem of oppression. This guy's a wordy person. Not wise. So he's promoting this, his latest book, Entertaining Race. Entertaining Race. And this book is uh, calling blacks entertaining. Hake report listener confirmed another black thief of white culture. Am I right? <laughs> Michael Eric Dyson, Hake report listener, will not give me credit. I've been calling blacks very entertaining for years. And it's the number one bestseller on Amazon for law enforcement biographies for some reason. And he wrote some book called Tears We Cannot Stop. He refused to come on the JLP show when, I, when that book came out. I was a producer at that time. He's a coward. He's a coward. And he's saying that blacks are entertaining. And they also, even on the slave ships, they had to entertain the whites and each other and stuff like that. And then they have to entertain a dialogue. They're forced to entertain a dialogue of race. Nobody forces them. They're brainwashed to do that by people, scumbags like him. This light-skinned radical, the lighter-skinned, the liberal, the lighter-skinned, the black liberal, the more uh, overcompensating and radical and stupid they are. Look at him. Look at, uh, who's that guy over out of, who's the attorney general of Minnesota or Missouri or whatever? Uh... Light-skinned, black, Muslim, radical, Antifa supporter. His son is a man, Antifa supporter. I'm blanking on that guy's name, but whatever. These people. Juicy Smollett. Uh, Dyson said Republicans have really packaged up CRT into a boogeyman for parents. Racism is the boogeyman for blacks and everybody else who hates whites and America. Racism is a fake boogeyman. The reverend argued that CRT in its original form of collegiate level studies is far less menacing than parents believe it is. Critical race theory is trying to find out the conditions that we need to be rescued from. Rescued from. As human beings. It's used to look not at individuals but at institutions. Because he's not about about personal responsibility. They had stand-up comedians on those boats? (laughs) I don't think they could stand up. They had to lay in those... Very orderly. You saw those illustrations. Not one standing up. (laughs) I'm kidding around. Anna Navarro is a co-host over there. She's supposed to be a Republican, I think. Am I wrong? Anna Navarro? She's that Trump-hating rhino. I think she's like a Cuban female. Goes on CNN. Used to go on CNN and hate Trump. Disgusting person. She's told viewers critical race theory is not being taught in K-12 schools. I debunked that with uh, the help of Mr. Daniel Buck and many other people who replied to him, who's a conservative teacher, somewhat conservative, I'm not sure. I'm going to play a little bit more of Daniel Buck. Co-host Sonny Hostin, another light-skinned black female, I guess, called the pushback against CRT a manufactured culture war and is, in her opinion, a 
rollback of history in our classrooms, which is a lie. We were all taught about slavery. We, we were even taught that slavery was bad in some cases. There were good and bad slave owners. Parents and school boards, this woman says, are weaponizing critical race theory as this parents' rights issue. Their children will be made to feel bad. Their children will be called oppressors and black children would be called oppressed people, Hostin said. That the discussion of race and slavery don't have any place in the classroom at that age. When asked about race-based teaching and tut- teachings, including segregating kids by race or asking them to d- identify their privilege, Michael Eric Dyson argued white people should not be telling people how to relieve relieve racism in the classroom because they were once participants in the oppression. He doesn't know anything what he's talking about. You can't just ask white brothers and sisters who have been participants in a particular problem of oppression how to relieve it. White comfort cannot be the predicate for making sure that race is a strategy that shouldn't be used, says Dyson. What is that even saying? He's an, he's an idiot. So here's a clip, a couple of clips give you a taste of what he's like. He went after the, that woman, that black female woman, the first black woman lieutenant governor of Virginia, to their shame. Although she is a Republican. She was the one carrying that gun. Winsome Sears. Winsome Sears. What a name. Listen to what this guy says. Uh, it's, I think it's clip 12A. Here's Michael Eric Dyson on that evil black woman show, uh, MSNBC, MSLSD, MSDNC, Joy Reid. And she doesn't get a word in edgewise because he talks so much like a woman. Listen to Michael Eric Dyson talking about this black female Republican lieutenant governor smearing her. The problem is here, they want, they want white supremacy by ventriloquist effect. There is a black mouth moving, but a white idea through the running on the runway of the tongue of a figure who justifies and legitimates uh, the white supremacist practices. We know that we can internalize in our own minds, in our own subconscious, in our own bodies, the very principles that are undoing us. So to have a black face uh, speaking in behalf of a white supremacist legacy is nothing new. And it is to the chagrin of those of us who study race that the white folk on the other side and the right wingers on the other side don't understand this is politics one-on-one and this is race not even one-on-one what's beneath one-on-one it's the it's the pre-k of race you should understand the fact that if you tell black people look i support a negro look there is a person of color that i am in favor of and that person of color happens to undermine and undercut and subvert the very principles about which we are concerned you do your yourself no service by pointing to them as an example of your racial progressivism stupid huh stupid nothing about what's right versus wrong nothing about right versus wrong he just hates white people he's calling calling her a, a puppet and yeah a lot of the republicans because they're cowards and they agree in their shallow a lot of the rhinos agree in our shallow and pretend Oh, it was historic that we elected a black president and re-elected him. Stupid, wrong kind of history you're making. Because that was the worst, one of the worst, that was the worst black president you could have elected. Obama, give me a break. Stupid. Gay. No. <laughs> Here's another example of him calling a, uh, this, I got this from Jewish Deplorable on Twitter. Somebody tagged me. Trump Jew 2 is the guy's name. He said, this isn't the first time Michael Dyson's accused black politician of being a puppet for white people. Last year, Dyson said about the attorney general of Kentucky, Daniel Cameron. Daniel Cameron's mouth is moving, but Kentucky Senator Mitch McConnell, the rhino, his thoughts are coming through his tongue. Interesting. White people just think more fairly, more frequently. I'm going to get to that with regard to these jury selection mess, but listen to him. 
for. And look, he then puts forward a blackface representation, literally in Daniel Cameron. So there, there's a ventriloquism going on. Daniel Cameron's mouth is moving. Mitch McConnell's thoughts are coming through his tongue. This is the worst Geppetto we've ever seen. And pulling those strings is one of the most it was one of the worst white supremacist uh, enactments that we've seen in the last 15 years in American politics. I forget what they were talking about. Policing reform bills, maybe, according to the Chiron. Daniel, Daniel Cameron of Kentucky. I don't remember what that thing was, but that was last year. Some dumb uh, thing. But you heard me during Hake News talking about the uh, jury selection of uh, Kyle Rittenhouse's jury, I think it was. Oh, no, Ahmaud Arbery's jury. Out of 12 jurors, only one is, is supposedly non-white or is black or something like that. They, the uh, defense attorneys eliminated eight black potential jurors from the pool. And the judge is like, I can't do anything about it at this point. Yeah, it's discrimination, but I can't do anything about it. The stupid prosecutors. This is Ahmad Arbery, the jogger. Blah, 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 blah. The jogger who had gone into a property, according to the video and what people were claiming, and some people thought that he had, including apparently these people who were trying to do a, a citizen's arrest, thought he had stolen stuff. St stuff that they thought had been gone missing. Turned up elsewhere. Don't know, maybe he was totally innocent in, in this case of this st stuff. But Ahmad Arbery had prior run-ins. He had been shown to be acting erratic with the cops and with ar armed people in the past. Even a allegedly attempting to steal a TV from a Walmart. And he had problems. His mother is acting like she's such a victim and that he's such a victim. He was out of control. He attacked a guy with a gun. A former cop, the former cop's son, had a shotgun. They got, he fought him up and he fought him over the gun. And he got himself shot and killed. Now it's just a question of whether they were right for trying to do a citizen's arrest in that way. I don't know. But it's definitely a witch hunt. But they're, they're complaining that, oh, the black, we need more black jurors. Black jurors don't think clearly necessarily. For, very frequently they have a racial agenda. Even if they themselves feel, don't feel that it's, uh, that it's the honest and right thing to do, they feel a pressure from the race, because they're all into race over what's right. You saw that with the guy who, who was the guy who got, conv Derek Chauvin. The guy with the knee, with his knee on Georgia, Florida's neck. This black guy who was part from St. Louis or, or Minneapolis or whatever that thing was, was like, oh, racism. There's no idea about racism. This, the Georgia, Florida thing, nothing to do with imaginary racism. These, these black jurors, they, they pretend white jurors are biased. Black jurors are biased. And same thing with that. This guy is pretending that whites don't think clearly. Blacks don't. This guy doesn't think clearly. Anyway. Anyway, guys. I'm going to talk about the Loudoun County mess if I have the time. But first, let me get to uh, Joe in Oregon on the line wants to talk about religion. What's up, Joe? How are you doing? Hey, good, Hank. How you doing? Doing well, man. I got a question for you. Um, I just want to know if I, I agree with like ninety nine percent of what you have to say, and Jesse uh, as well. Okay, but I'm not, I'm not religious at all. Never have been. So you and, were not um, raised Christian? No. What are I you? Raised, I'm nothing. I have no religion. I was raised without religion. Wow, and in Oregon? It was no in New York, actually, New York State. Oh, okay. Speak up for me yeah, so you come I, through clearly. Sure, sure, sure. I was raised in New York State, but I moved to this uh, crappy state about seven years ago, I mean, I'm, and I'm moving to uh, another state soon. You had both but, parents? Um, I'm sorry? You had both parents? Yep. And so they're both agnostics or atheists or something? 
I, I don't know what religion they were. I have no idea. <laughs> wow, what a life! It, it just what are you? It, it just never it just never came up. Are you white, black? What what are you? I'm white. What type of white are you? I'm uh, European. <laughs> That's funny, man. <laughs> what, Interesting. What do you mean? What type of white am I? What does that mean? Oh, I mean, I don't know. There's there's different types of whites. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah. What types are there? Well, I mean, there's long there's like, long time American whites for sh- for sure. Like mo- they've been Americans for generations. There are. Yeah, I believe my uh, my parent my grandparents were from the U.S. I mean, born and raised here. I believe. I think. So were you, what part yeah. of New York were you in that, that religion upstate. didn't even come up? Upstate New York, in the Buffalo area. Oh. Huh. Yeah. yeah. Um, no, I mean, we don't have a, what, what is your question about it? So my question is, do you respect people that are not religious, but have your same views? Yeah. On social issues? Yeah, I, I respect, I, I respect even Chuck. Believe even it or not. Chuck. Yeah, I even wow. respect Chuck. Wow. I have no respect for his views. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so, I mean, so you wouldn't tell me, like, I need to be Christian. No, that's, that's on be- you. Awesome. Dude, that's awesome. I mean, why I'm aren't you? you why aren't you? Well, you say it never came up. That's so strange to me. It is. I grew up in a very strange household. Oh, um, how so? If you don't well, mind. Well, my mom was not at all. My mother was addicted to prescription drugs, and uh, so there was a lot of, like, neglect and abuse in the house. Yeah. And uh, my father just didn't really care. So, um, anyway. Yeah, but they were so together. Was like, but they were, they were together. They were married. Yep. And your grandparents, uh, were, they, were they Christians or not? I have no idea. I actually never really met them. Oh, okay. Except I think there were one or two left when I was a baby. Were you ever a there. liberal? Yes. Until when? Uh, I, well, it was a slow process. Oh, okay. I think officially, I did just d- describe myself as being a, a conservative maybe about seven years ago. How old are you now, if you don't mind? I'm 58. Okay. Wow, yeah. so you were and, a liberal. But I, you started calling yourself a conservative at 49. Officially, officially. <laughs> yeah. But I was conservative for many years before that. Right. I just, you know, there was so, I just didn't make that jump and actually say it to people right. until I was like you know, around 49, 50, around there. How long you been in Oregon again? About seven years. In the Portland area, like liberal area? Yep. Oh man! Yep, I hate it here. I'm getting out of here. I are you the one who? The are you the one who skateboards and stuff like that? And you almost no, got in a fight, no, and you no. almost got shot because people were shooting over at Chop no. Chaz. <laughs> no, no, that's not me. I don't oh, skateboard. Okay. I don't fight. I don't do any of that crap. <laughs> well, I, I don't know if you got in a fight, but another skateboard. guy from Oregon. Was it Oregon or was yeah. it C- up in Seattle? Chop Chaz, that's Seattle. Huh? Well, Chop oh, okay. Chaz, that was in Seattle. Oh, okay. That was in Seattle. I don't know Although my we geography. Had our version, <laughs> it's yeah, all the same. We had our version here too. Okay, but it only lasted about maybe two weeks. Man. Or less. Um. But uh, yeah, I. I what I, do you think? I, what's your think, opinion on Christians? I believe in freedom of religion. I completely support anyone's right to believe whatever they want to believe. I I have looked into Christianity myself a bit. Um, I don't, um, I'm not religious because I feel that there's no proof, there's no actual proof of, uh, what Christianity states. What, and it also what's, goes what, get, what does and, it state, well, what does it state that you need proof of? Well, hear me out. Yeah. And it also, um, a lot of what Christianity states or what is in the Bible goes against all logic as I know it, as I understand it. Can you name a couple you know, of things, examples of those sure. things that you need proof of yeah. and that goes against logic? Sure. So, for example, from what I understand, and maybe I'm wrong, correct me if I'm wrong, but there, uh, Christianity, 
Christianity believes that there is a God, correct? Yeah. Uh, that goes against logic. I don't understand that there's like this this being that doesn't actually physically exist that is has power that, that that they're doing things, but they don't actually physically exist. That goes against logic and science, as I understand it. Oh, what's th- okay? Interesting. That's that's logical to you to think that it's not logical. Yes. So as I understand it. Okay. Yeah. And I mean, but you that's know, what, a, I could that's be like completely a, wrong. I mean, anything's possible. To me, that's. I think that your your focus is off, but okay. And then what's How so? what's the other? Well, um, I don't understand why that even like you need proof that God is is real. Like it's it's a strange thing to want. Yeah, I, I need proof, just like I need proof that aliens exist or that ghosts exist. But there's nothing. The there's no comparison exists. between God and aliens and stuff like that. Oh well, there is because a God is God is that, a given, and aliens are irrelevant. How is God a given? Most people even most people know that God is real, but and I so the proof. burden of proof is on you people. <laughs> but that's like saying the burden of proof is on people to to prove that uh, that fairies don't exist. Or no, no, most don't people exist. don't believe in fairies. Most people believe in God. So the burden of proof is on the atheists. The atheists are the weirdos. Some people believe in fairies. Some do, but most people believe that there is a God. Most people know that there is a God. That doesn't make them right. I know, but the burden of proof is what most most people what most people believe. Oftentimes, is there's mm-hmm. some s- sense of truth to it. It's it may not be the exact truth. Most people are wrong, right? You're right about that. But think mm-hmm. about it. You guys think, oh, the burden of, I have to assume that there is no God. When for millennia, you think you're smarter than all these people over the, over time who believed in God? Maybe. You think you're more logical <laughs> I mean, and smarter? <laughs> really? Possibly. Possibly. You, I no, mean, it's a yes or no. A it's a yes or no. Don't, don't be coy with that question. You think uh, you're smarter. Well, I, you think you're wiser, more logical. I don't know if I am. I don't know. They then might why, are you be right. as, why are you assuming? They might be right. I'm sorry? Why are you assuming that there is no God, that that's more logical to assume I, that? Well, because I, I'm not going to believe in something if I don't have any proof and that goes against all logic. However... The, but you're blind you know, to the proof. Out. You're blind to no, the logic. I'm say, it's, po- it's not I'm logical. It's possible. I'm saying it's possible. I just don't. I just don't have any proof, and it, it, and there's no logic there. You're, you're blind it's to the proof, logical. and you lack the logic because it's illogical. It's illogical to think that there's no God. Well, what is the proof? Where's the proof? It's all around you. Look around you. Look at yourself. There's science to explain all of that. No, there isn't. Yeah, there is. Science is from God too. There is no science to explain you. You do not understand the science, the so-called science that created you. You do not understand it. Don't pretend you do. Uh, <laughs> That's pure arrogance. And what created uh, this? What created the science that created you? I don't know. Just because I don't understand something doesn't mean that I have to automatically jump to the conclusion that it was created by God. I know, God. but just because That's you don't understand do. something doesn't you know, mean that it's you know, illogical and many, that there's no proof. Many years ago. Many years ago, they thought, oh, what's this water falling from the sky? It must be rain gods. You're speculating. And now, and now we know that that's not true. So just because we don't understand something or we can't explain something doesn't mean that we automatically have to jump to a conclusion that, oh, it must be a god. But everybody god. knows that there's a god. You're the or weirdo. Or something supernatural. You're the weirdo. I'm sorry? Everybody knows that there's a God. You're the weird. In fact, you probably even know that there's a God. You just you're just playing dumb. No, I don't know that there's a God. I'm not saying there isn't. I'm just saying I don't. Then why know. assume that there is none? I, why assume that it's illogical that there's no proof? Because I don't see any actual proof of it. But there's a lot of people who are blind. You don't see a lot of things. 
it doesn't make sense to just assume that something is not true because you don't see it. Uh, well, no one has ever given any proof. But no one can prove anything to you. Have you ever tried to prove something to someone? They're not going to, they're stubborn, just as you yeah. are. They're yeah. stubborn and arrogant well, and going to hold on too. to their belief. You're stubborn too, and that's okay. No, 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 no. You're, you're not acknowledging yourself. They're stubborn and arrogant, just like you are, and they're going to hold on to what they believe. You well, believe there uh, is no God. You're also focusing... I, no, I don't. Yes, you do. That's not true. You're jumping to that See conclusion. now, see, I'm, then you I'm do believe that there is a God. I don't see, no, I'm saying I don't know. The atheists I, are liars. I don't you're lying. Any, you're I'm lying. I'm not an atheist. Dude, I'm not an atheist. Yeah, you are. I, you're repeating no, the not. same stuff that the atheists pr- pretend. That there's no proof no. and it's not logical. I'm saying, until I see proof, I'm not going to believe that there is definitely a God. And since it you goes don't against to. all logic, I'm, I'm... But it's not against I'm, all logic. You're the illogical one. It's pure arrogance to assume that there's no God. Mm, well, I'm going to have to say I disagree with you, but... Um, but it's okay. I totally respect Christians, and I respect everyone's right nice. to believe whatever religion they want to be. Do you see I the decline as, as Christianity is attacked and declined and, and uh, twisted? You see the mm-hmm. decline of the uh, society? There is a correlation there. However, I think there are it's other factors that is contributing to the decline of society. It's a yes or no society. question. The answer is... There is a correlation, yes. Mm-mm. It's just yes. The two things are happening at once. It's just yes. Do you see but the decline? See... <laughs> yes. I'll give you a yes. Okay? <laughs> but I think I don't think it's really that's what's the contributing factor. I think it's other things. I think the, I think I the atheists the are silly. Day. I think the atheists think... are silly for getting hung up on proof and and logic. When they have no logic, they have no proof. You don't live by proof or logic. Think about how you live your life. You don't live by I, proof and logic. Where you do, do, where you do, you've become more conservative, more like the Christians. Mm-hmm. Well, I think I do live by proof and logic. No, you, you think you do, but that's pure arrogance. You don't. Think about the ways that you are out of control in your life. There's no logic to it, and there's no living by proof. You don't learn. Yes, I do. Yes. You I learn do, a little absolutely. bit. You learn a little bit, and then you become more like a Christian. That's why you became more conservative in your older age. Uh, that might be part of it. Yeah. For sure. Um, Where you become more logical, you, be, you come closer to God. Well, I become right now you're hung up on something that's like a false version of a, a female imitation of logic. That wants to pretend mm. that there is no God. You know what, you know what not, I mean by female logic? Yes, I do. I completely understand yeah. what you're saying there. I don't think, though, I think you're, you're kind of focusing on the fact, like you're thinking I'm saying that there is no God. I'm not What saying about the that. principles of Christianity? Oh, some of the principles I agree with. Yeah. See? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. The, the, atheists, sort of the atheists are not honest. That's why I'm pushing you on that. You, that yeah. Atheists I, believe there is atheist, no God, though. and they yes. just assume I, that that's the, that's the logical assumption yes. to make. But yes. it's not the logical yes. assumption. I, yes, you, I, I agree. I am not an atheist. I do not say there is no God, definitively. I'm not saying that. I've never said they that. Pret- no, but the atheists pretend that they don't say that either. They pretend... Oh, I don't believe that oh, there no, are gods. No, <laughs> I've known many atheists in my life, and they definitely say there is absolutely no god. No, a lot of they well nowadays, the newer ones, the the more female atheists, because maybe they used mm-hmm. to be a little bit less illogical back then, but nowadays yeah. they claim that they're so um, what is that passive aggressive about it because they hate yeah. Christianity so much. They say, yeah. "Oh, I don't believe that. I have not seen the proof that there are gods." They pretend that there are many mm-hmm. gods. Oh, which god? There are many gods. That's how much they hate Christianity. Yeah. I yeah, I haven't heard that, but I have. I don't talk to a lot of nice. those types of people anyway. Yeah. So I've gotten rid of all, pretty much all the liberals out of my life. Wow. Yeah. 
Well, man, interesting. Uh, almost all my friends are conservative now. Are they Christians? I'm hard, hardcore conservative. Some of them are Christian. Yeah. Not all of them. Some of them think like me. Yeah. Well, man, so, interesting. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I'm glad, though, that you respect people, you know, that you respect other people's choice in religion. Why does that matter, just out of curiosity? To you? Um, for me, it was more out of curiosity. Oh, okay. I was just curious as to what your thoughts were there. Yeah, I mean, uh, there, are, there are people who are atheists who um, are closer to finding God, I think, than the mm-hmm. people who think that they're Christians, just because they're, yeah. they're clinging towards the truth, and they'll, they will soon become Christians. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. I don't, I don't know that I'll ever be Christian, but maybe. I mean, I can't predict the future, but I'm definitely, um, you know, I share all your values. Is it not true that uh, that the ways that you are out of control are not logical and they're not based in proof? Uh, Say that again. In your personal life, just to drive this point, is it not true that the way that your life is out of control in the, in the minor ways it may still be out of control, so-called minor, it's not, Mm. is not based in logic or proof. No, I don't believe that's true. Well, can you give me an example? I mean, you know, let's know say, me, let's say, like uh, would, let's say you overeat sometimes. Control. You know that you're not supposed uh-huh. to overeat. Nothing right. logical or proof based about you overeating at times. Yeah, there is. Because if I, my experience has been if I overeat, I get fat. I said, why do you overeat? Nothing, nothing logical or proof based. About overeating. Why do I overeat? Yeah. Uh, it's not, is it logical it's and good. proof-based that's, to be overeating? Yeah, lot, yeah, because the proof is that the food tastes good. So that's not logical. Yeah, it is. No, it's not. <laughs> I mean, it's you think logical. It's, you think it's, it's logical to overeat because the food tastes good, good? If something tastes good, it makes logical sense that I would want to eat more of it. I know, but it doesn't logic. mean you're living a logical life because you're you're you know that it's not good for you. Uh, so you're not living as rationally true. as you pretend. But, well, that's not in logic. your face. More, dude, <laughs> no, you're, you're, I I I disagree with what you're saying. I think you're mixing. Are up you thinking that you're living more. a rational life? Ah. Uh, that's a good question. I don't know the answer to that at this moment. Yeah. Well, anyway, because I, I'm not sure. I would have to explore what you mean by rational. Is is it rational or irrational to eat food that tastes good that you know is hurting you? Um, it's it's not a good decision. Is it rational or irrational? <laughs> it's okay. It's it's irrational. But uh, thank at the you. Same time, at the same time, I can control how much I eat. I might eat a, uh, a little bit too much once in a while, but I'm not eating way too much. I definitely control my weight. You know, nice. I, I'm in good shape. Right. I eat well, I, I'm very healthy, extremely healthy. Cool. Can I ask you another question? Yeah. So here's another question for you. Right. What do you think about, about veganism? I don't know. Don't know enough about it. Yeah, I don't know. There's, I yeah. think it's a fad. A lot of people do it wrong. They hurt themselves. Uh, I've seen one or two people who seem like they're healthy and strong, actually strong, who supposedly mm-hmm. do that. But I don't know. It seems, are you yeah. a vegan? I'm vegan. I've been vegan 31 years, and I was a vegetarian seven years before that, and I'm extremely healthy. Um... My doctor tells me I'm doing it right. I should keep doing whatever I'm doing. My blood tests always come back great. I'm not. I don't have to take any medication like everyone else I know that's my age. Um, you know. So well, watch it's, out it's, because it's, Satan it's, can it's keep you comfortable and just healthy enough, and in misery. <laughs> Why would I be in misery? What do you mean? Uh, because of, because of all this, oh, I'm living well, I'm, I'm pretty self-controlled, I'm healthy, 
I'm, I'm not, I'm going past this vegan thing. I'm going back to the, uh, this believing in God stuff. Yeah. You can, you can, uh, live just comfortable enough. It's what th- they're trying to do to America. Make us comfortable slaves. Yeah. Just comfortable enough that, that we go along with the madness and the destruction. It's evil. Yeah, I agree with you there. Definitely. Yeah. So watch yourself, but, uh, we'll talk again, man. All right, brother. You take it easy. All right. You as well. Take care, Joe. All right. All right. Bye. Bye. I might have gotten carried away with him, guys. Uh, let me get to Bible Go To Guy out of Los Angeles, California. What's up, Bible Go To Guy? Turn on the AC. Somebody turned off the AC. We need it back on in here. Whole lot of hot air coming out of my mouth. I'll try not to contribute to the hot air. <laughs> Go for hey, it. Hey, uh, okay. Um, I called originally. Thank you. To, to discuss. To discuss. Let's see. Where's that guy? <laughs> you forget? Oh, shoot, man. I can't get to my notes. Well, I um, I see here, if I can help, immigrants never yeah. want to fix their own country. That's, yeah, that that was one of the points. Um, I remember um, just hurting the feelings of the, you know, the Mexicans and the uh, South Americans, uh, Central Americans, and the blacks telling them, you know, you come over here, right? And you're living a good life, a better life than you had over there. And yet, none of you are patriots enough to ever think of, like, maybe I should, like, do some effort toward helping Mexico or, you know, Africa, wherever I come from, you know, China, become more free, become more like America was intended to be. Why, why is that? Why do you guys not patriot to your own countries? You, you, yeah. you, you take on the name, you fly the flag at the, at the soccer games, and, you know, you act like you're not... Um, you act like you love Mexico more than America and, you know, et cetera, right. whatever country. And yet you really don't do anything for them, you know, and you're supposed to have answers now. You come over to America and you see how Americans do the, do the success, right? And yet you don't do it yourselves. It's, it's, it's mind-boggling. Yeah. But they'll talk all about how, you know, we're all being, you know, wrong and all this kind of stuff. But they don't, all they do is complain over here. They don't do anything for their own people. Yeah. And, and, and you see that, that's, that's throughout, you know, they're, they're cheap tippers, they're, everything about them is cheap and, and, and self-centered. Yeah. You know, and that's what happens when you blame everybody else for your, you know, for your issues in life. Yeah. Um... And this last caller, this last caller that you had? Yeah. There was plenty of proof back in the day. Jesus did all kind of miracles that did not cause people to believe. Right. Moses split the sea, and the, and and what did you? What did the Israelites do when they came across on the other side of the shore? They built a dang golden calf and started worshiping that because they didn't want the oppressive right. laws, the, the oppressive laws of uh, of treating each other with love that God that God gave them. That's what the Ten Commandments are. Those are commandments of love towards yeah. each other. And uh, they didn't want any part of that, so they, they went back to creating their own God and their own laws. People believe what they want, and they think that they're being logical. It's like, yeah, um, but- I heard a 2012 service a couple weeks ago on the yeah. Bonds Archive Sunday services about, uh-huh. or maybe it was actually just last week in the hip, hip, hypnosis, um, brainwashing stuff. I think one of the one of the guys in church talked about how the angry people were the most easily hypnotized to do all kinds of weird things like use their shoe as a phone and one guy laid his head and went to sleep on a woman's lap and they all think that they were afterwards talking to them they all think oh I'm I was fully aware I was fully conscious of what I was doing I just felt like I wanted to Pretend my shoe was a phone. And you tell people to calm down who are doing something evil, and they're like, I'm very calm. And they're acting so-called calm, but they are brainwashed, and, and they don't realize that they're the ones being irrational and illogical. Yes, yes, true, yeah. well said. You know, uh, I, I finally got the original reason why I called. Okay. I said, I said you know how that one 
was it one caller you said or some some celebrity you were quoting said white people shouldn't be involved in stopping oppression? Yeah, that's a well. That was because Michael. They were once oppressors. Michael Eric Dyson says white parents shouldn't have a say in the education in getting rid of CRT from education because they were oppressors. Okay. Okay. We shouldn't then be catering that- to white comfort. Stupid. Right. So let's take that. Let's take that. Um, that's that's silly illogic to to the next level then, and apply it to everything else. Then why? Then why are people who have been on drugs or in prison allowed to counsel people not to go to prison and to stay off drugs? I know. They have taken it once right. themselves. <laughs> they have been, you know, computer hackers. Yeah. Are hired by the government all the time. Yeah. To help the government fight against other hackers. Indeed. You know, it's like, it's like uh, if, if you can hire a great soldier from the opposing army, you know, you're going to do that. Even even if he fought against you, you know, his skills. Right. Are such that you, didn't you we know, hire some in there. Didn't we hire some like Nazi scientists to do some like Ooh. crazy things? Lots of them. The, yeah. the chief of NASA was a was a Nazi. Nice. Crazy. <laughs> anyway, I appreciate anyway. it. Bob, go to guy. All right, thank you, James. All Bye. right, take care, guys. We're at five minutes till, and I don't have much time to play. I want to play this disappear song, last song of the album. If you thought the last song, the previous song, was depressing, wait for this song. <laughs> uh, by the way, Hydro says white with the super chats. Quick super chats, guys. Hydro says, white people who work for MSNBC must have to walk on eggshells. Yeah. Bibi42 says, the people who have faith in God and live their lives the, the right way are at peace. Those without are always struggling with their emotions or jobs or relationships or their health or money and so on and so forth. The tr- proof is right there in front of us all, he says. He also says, have a good and safe weekend, everybody. James Hake's birthday celebration extravaganza. Rage is on. Also, good luck on your next debate, Hake. That's right. I'm going to be on Modern Day Debate Monday night, I think. Enjoy, guys. Well, actually, maybe I'll talk you through this one. It's kind of long. Disappear by Suffering and the Hideous Thieves, the last track on Real Panic Formed, 2002 album on Velvet Blue Music. Disappear. I like this track. Have a good weekend, guys. Grin and bear it. Plug your ears. Robert Lee says, bye, Hake, I'm grinning and bearing. (laughs) If you can hear me. Great show. Thank you, Miklo El Chicano. Oh my gosh, Hake, these vocals. 